Hello mate, welcome back. In this video, we're going to expand upon what we started doing in the last episode. And we're gonna look at ways that we can use our engine to basically build a game, since we know <laughs> that's our end goal. Before I get started though, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, there are several ways you can do that via the Patreon link in the description below, or you can join the channel and become a member. I am starting to create more member and patron content, although the members and patrons won't have seen that yet. That's coming soon. And very soon, there will also be a new feature called Super Thanks, which sounds kind of creepy, but it's going to be happening. Anyway, let's jump into this. So, so what we did in the last video was we demonstrated how you can create different labels for clicking on a character. And this is automatically, this label here, mom underscore one underscore one, is automatically loaded when we click on the mum icon and we are in chapter one, sequence one. So that's one thing useful that we can do, but we want to go a little bit further. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at these. These are our items in the room that we click on. And at the moment, all they do is they say something which can be as funny or not funny as you want. As you see, I haven't really done anything funny here. But what we can do is we can actually use these items to create simple puzzles or simple fetch quests and things like that. Obviously, if you've got more than one room, it's going to be a lot more logical, but I'm just working with the one room at the moment, and that's how we're going to demonstrate how to do this. So the game starts in label hint or rather auto event one underscore zero and if you remember we actually look for auto event underscore bracket underscore which is going to be the string of the chapter and the string of the sequence so before we do anything else and if it exists then we're going to load it now that's great but uh, how do we actually utilize that so if we have like for example a prologue that we want to create then we can simply put auto event one underscore zero and then this will be our kind of prologue to the game and for this we don't actually need this in here at all because what happens after an auto event is if we go back to our script file if auto event exists then it will load the event the first thing it does though is it loads the chapters hidden which again we don't actually have a hint because it's going to be an auto event so all we've got is an empty label there um, so that's that simple. So if Rempi has label auto event, which is the label here. So in the case of chapter one, sequence zero, it'll be auto event underscore one underscore zero. So seeing if that label exists, and if it does, it will call the expression, it will call that label, and then it will automatically move on to the next part of the game. The sequence will increment by one. Realistically, if we just take this lot out, and we'll put some text in there that makes actually sense. So this is an auto event, could be used as a prologue or cutscene. So if we wanted, for example, a movie to play, if we had video or animation or something, we could pop that in here and that would happen. And then it would automatically go to one underscore one. And then we have the only thing we currently have in the sequence of one underscore one is if we click on the mum character, but we can add as many things in here as we want. So let's say we wanted the waiting room door number two to have something happen that doesn't necessarily have to be something that's gonna impact the storyline. It could just be something that's a bit funny, like, you know, you knock on the door. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change where it says blank and we're gonna go one underscore one because we're in sequence one one and now we can have for example someone just shout out of the door um i'm taking a dump come back later and then put some exclamation marks so that adds a bit of urgency to it so now if you're in sequence one underscore one and you click on that particular door you're going to get a funny comment out of the door has absolutely no impact on the storyline whatsoever because it doesn't have next in it but it just adds a little bit of life to your game you could do that for every single item theoretically if you wanted to you could create a new one of these these item labels for every single sequence in every single chapter 
which would take a lot of time but it would be amusing because it would encourage the player to actually explore the environment and click on everything before they move on to the next part of the sequence. Now, the way that I've written this engine is so that we have a help screen which gives the player a bit of a clue as to what's happening. So as you can see, if we were to go to label hint underscore one underscore one return, now we need to add some text in there or we do so we actually have a variable. So if we go to our variable defines we can say this is the tip screen. So all we do in this is we set the tip text. So we can actually just go control C there. And then we can just say dollar, there we go. And all we're gonna do in here is we're going to say, I wonder if there is anyone we can talk to. And that will be the tip for this this sequence and what it's basically doing is giving you a hint that in order to move on into the next part of the game you have to click on somebody to talk to that person who the only person available is the mum character so what we're going to do in here is we're just going to put next which is if you remember from when we wrote it way back when we wrote our classes next just means the sequence is going to increment by one now yes we could just put sequence plus equals one in every single label but i like to keep things as readable as possible for the user someone may download this engine who's not very good with python that's a better way of putting it so they maybe just want to write next in here next with open and close brackets and then it will move on the sequence by one so we can just save that and then we can run our code and as you can see the first thing that happens the minute we hit start is that this event happens it's said by the mum character because that's the letter that we appended the line with and as it says this is an auto event could be used as a prologue or cutscene then we click on okay and then we come into here so we're now in sequence one one because auto event one zero was our cutscene so we can look at surgery door two i'm taking a dump come back later fine and if we click on that again no oh, we go out that door we can come back but if we keep on clicking there because the sequence isn't moving on at this point it's going to keep happening however if we now click on our hint you can see i wonder if there's anyone we can talk to and if we wanted to if, if we were so inclined or, or, or so incompetent that we needed the hint on the screen all the time we can just drag that down to the bottom and that will stay there where we can see it in the next and then if we were to come down and click on the mum character hi sweetheart this is a sequence independent chat and then we click on that and then as you can see the value of this hasn't changed because we are now in sequence one two and we haven't written a label that's going to change the tip text so it's going to remain there but if we click on the mum character all it does is says hey sweetheart it doesn't actually move the sequence on and if we click on this door, it now goes back to the default text. This surgery is currently occupied. That's fine. So when we come out of here, we can just say, yeah, that's fine. So you can see how these different things are affecting it. Now, if we wanted to create a new file and we can just go one underscore two dot RPY. And then we can copy paste some of this or just copy and paste the hint because we don't really want to have just constantly clicking on the person so now we can just change the tip text to say oh, i don't know let's explore and then we're going to just assign a random uh, item within our let's just say the trash can we find something in the trash can for this label so we just go in here and we're going to hit there and we're going to say uh i don't know turns out the stench was from a moldy banana but there was also a key inside marvelous so now we can save that on there so now what we can do is we can actually have we have to change this before we forget don't forget to change this otherwise it's going to throw up an error because it's the duplicate so this is one underscore two and this is one underscore two remember you cannot have two labels with the same name so if you forget to do this it will throw up an error so just remember to change your one underscore two your one underscore two or whatever chapter and sequence you are currently in so now what we can do is we can say okay now that we've got a key 
We can have maybe another event trigger. You can have object dependent or rather event dependent things happen. For example, once you've picked up the key, you could change the default waiting room thing. So you could have maybe if player inventory contains key, I'm speaking in pseudo code, of course, then this door would give you something else. Maybe it will take you to a new location. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So let's just say, for example, waiting room trash can. All right, let's do this. So we've got, we can't spell stench for a start. So now we're going to say um, player inventory. And all I'm going to do for a player inventory this time is we're going to have, I might have even created it. No, I haven't. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to say default player inventory equals and it's going to be an empty string and what we're going to do in this label is we're going to copy and paste that that uh, variable name so that we don't spell it wrong and we're going to say that control v dot append because it's a list we can we can add things to it so we're going to open brackets then we're going to add that and we're just going to say uh, surgery key like that so now that's been appended to there and then we have to say next at this point well we don't have to but it would be a good idea to otherwise all we're going to do is we're going to end up with the player being able to repeatedly click on that trash can and add key after key after key after key to their inventory and we don't want to do that so this is going to stay in the player's inventory for the remainder of the game but we don't want multiple copies of it we just want one so now we can come back to our waiting room and let's say we've got door number one Door number one's fine. So what we'll do is we will say if player inventory, if string surgery key in player inventory and then put the tab these two lines in. And what we can actually do, we can say if not surgery key and let's see if that works there you go so what we're getting now is if we do a shift reload just in case as you can see it's not changed what happens but if we now have a extra line in there we can just say instead else location equals and then we have to put a pound sign or a dollar sign at the front there and then we have our other locations. So let's go to our variable defines and we've got another location there. We can go to the seating area like that. And we can say location equals seating area. And now once we get to that area of our game, the door is now accessible and we're gonna go to another area. So let's see what happens if we do that. First things first, let's bring up our hint screen. I wonder if there is someone that we can chat to. Let's just click on her. Hi, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's cool. So we're now, well, that was easy. Let's explore. So now we need to click on a trash can. The trash can is smelly. Turns out the stench was from a moldy banana, but there was also a key inside. So now we've got a key in our inventory. Let's see what happens if we click on surgery door. Boom. Instead of giving us text, it's now allowed us to go into that location. So that's another handy thing that we can do with our game code that just allows us to have unlockable locations and we maybe don't have the seating area on our map screen. So if you remember, we've got a map screen here. Currently, we don't actually have any map icons, but that's something else that you can think about. But what we have there is the makings of a really solid game engine that's gonna allow us an awful lot of functionality and things that we can do. So that gives us a lot of things to work with. I trust you guys will make the most of that information. And in the last episode, we're going to put together some more ideas of how we can utilize this game engine to create some really interesting mechanics. Hope you found that useful guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right. Bye bye.